arrested. Uh, joining me now is Niger Ennis, civil rights leader, chair of the Congress of Racial Equality. Also with me, Pastor Daryl Scott, founder of the New Spirit Revival Center, National Diversity Coalition for Trump board member. Niger, you and I have been uh, you, you and I have been pals since 1996 when we both worked <laughs> for another television network. Oh, uh, the chaos that we're seeing on American streets does not seem to be about addressing racism anymore, no. does it, Niger? Not at all. And the hidden story is that the number of legitimate, justified, and frustrated, peaceful protesters are now clashing with these violent thugs. In Cincinnati, you had a city councilman, a Democrat, city councilman pleading with these outside agitators, probably Antifa or some other anarchist groups, to stop passing out bricks to 14 and 15 year old black kids and telling them to throw them at police. In Washington DC, you had a group of peaceful protesters making a citizen's arrest on the violent protesters and handing them over to the police who were apparently at that moment uh, missing in action. It is a disgrace what's going on. What these people are doing is causing generational permanent damage to cities that are majority black and brown. George Floyd is turning in his grave. He, his, he's a decent, he was a decent man. His family is made up of decent people that understand that this violence and criminality has nothing to do with justice. Pastor Scott, um, uh, one of my friends earlier tonight who is not a big fan of President Trump said to me uh, in, a, in a text said, where's Oprah? Where's Obama? You know, beloved people in the African-American community, global superstars, uh, you know, all the big, you know, athletes, where are they appealing to these people to go home? Go home, take care of your family, take care of your, your mom, your dad, whatever it is, but go home. You know, we could protest peacefully in the morning, but go home. Where are they? No, their voices are very, very silent right now. These are they that helped agitate and instigate and stir this pot by continuing to insist that the black uh, community in America was being oppressed and now they're influenced, they're being very, very silent about it. You have all these elements uh, in society that say, well, Trump's not my president. Obama's still my president. They have the hashtag, still my president. Well, where's your president at? Why isn't he standing up as an American citizen? as a, a, a public figure and saying, listen, this is not the way. Violence will not help anything. There's an insidious criminal element that seeks to exploit and capitalize upon this human suffering and, and this injustice, and they're doing it for nefarious, sinister purposes. But let me tell you something. President Trump stepped up to the plate today and said, not on my watch. I'm going to put a stop to this crap, and he's going to do it too. And we've seen a small taste of it, and if these people don't calm down, let me tell you something. They're going to regret a lot of the activity that they've engaged in. Now, he's this, not I, I'm so now, pleased. Now. I couldn't agree more with my brother, uh, Daryl Scott. And let me just add, I'm so pleased that President Trump, Attorney General Barr, have labeled Antifa a terrorist organization. What they need to do is follow the money. How is it that bricks and bats and two by fours end up in these communities from Kansas to Los Angeles to New York and given out? Uh, to these violent anarchists. Follow the money, and I suspect you're going to find Open Society Foundation and George Soros fingerprints. That man should have been deported several decades ago. He's a destruction to our civilization and a clear and present danger to our country. Well, I just want to remind everybody watching tonight that the United States of America, okay, is the only thing standing between you know, the people of the planet and, and more yes. of a Chinese-run global cooperative, okay? America, they, they, there are a lot of people who believe that America has to be taken down in order to establish the utopia of, of more of a global governance. And they just want that. They, they, they don't like the old normal. That's why they love talking about something called the new normal. It's not about racial harmony. It's about domination. And that's what they're all about, <laughs> domination. Now, Anderson Cooper is lashing out at the president uh, for wanting to end the lawlessness. Watch. The president seems to think that dominating black people, dominating peaceful protesters is law and order. It's not. He calls them thugs. Who is the thug here? 
hiding in a bunker, hiding behind a suit? Who is the thug? Um, Pastor Scott. Anderson Cooper sounds stupid. I'm, I, I tell him that to his face. Let me tell you something. Joe Biden today called for sweeping police reform. But during his administration, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Sandra Bland, they all died during he and uh, Barack Obama's administration. And he didn't call for sweeping police reform then. This, this harvest that we're receiving now, this frustration that the black community is having now, it's based upon seeds that were sown during the prior administration. If, 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 if if George Floyd is the last straw, then the first, second, third, and fourth straw all came up under Obama's administration, and they didn't have this degree of outrage. They were not trying to accuse the president or hold the president culpable for actions of individual policemen. Joe Biden was the in the Senate, right, Niger, up for 30 years? Absolutely. What the heck? What did Joe Biden do for the African-American community in 30-plus years? And then Pelosi, eight years for vice president. Pelosi, Biden... Uh, all these characters have been in power for decades. In all these cities that are being burned on fire, 99% of them are controlled by liberal, the most far left wing liberal Democrats who have controlled it as a one party state for decades. It must come to a crashing halt and end. If there's one president that has done something for real criminal justice reform, it's the one you've got there right now, President Donald Trump, who's done something about reforming our criminal justice system, who has done something to give young blacks and browns an alternative, pouring historic amount of money into historically black colleges, which is a total reversal from the last administration that actually defunded black historically black colleges and universities. Yeah, they have it's no time record. for have, folks yeah. to really wake up. Yeah, they have no they have no record and they know it. So that that's also why they're angry, because Trump actually outdid them in helping people and now he's uh, he's got to got to get tough got to get tough to restore these cities and give people hope again. Niger and Pastor, thank you so much. Great to see both God of you bless tonight. You. Thank All you.